Good morning. A very warm welcome to this morning's virtual church service from the Nursebury Team Ministry. A few weeks ago, some of us were discussing holidays at the Goldsboro Church virtual coffee morning. Where have you been, Marilyn? Reverend Gary asked me. Nowhere exciting, was my off-the-cuff response. After we'd zoomed out, I suddenly thought, what an ungrateful wretch I'd been. Of course I'd been to exciting places. I'd been to New York, Paris, Rome. They were all incredibly exciting. The most special place I visited, however, was Assisi. How blessed am I? What wonderful memories. The one place I've always wanted to visit, however, is the Holy Land. So, since speaking to Gary, that is where I have been, in lockdown, in the eight weeks leading up to Easter. I've always thought how wonderful it would be to walk where Jesus walked, and talked, and breathed, and lived, and died and rose again. So when I was asked if I would like to participate in a virtual journey through the Holy Land, I said, yes, please. This was a Zoom course entitled The World of Jesus. It was run by Scargill House and led by the Reverend Gordon Day, a retired priest who has led many pilgrimages to the Holy Land and is an absolute fount of historical and biblical knowledge. With the aid of photographs, historical writings and maps, we set off from Nazareth and ended up in Jerusalem during Holy Week. I know I'm unlikely to go to the Holy Land in reality, but this really was the next best thing for me, and I almost feel as if I've been there. We began each of the weekly sessions in prayer, based on a particular prayer I think will be familiar to many of us, perhaps even from school days. It is known to us as the Prayer of St Richard of Chichester, and I'd like to share it with you this morning. So let us pray. Thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given us, all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, day by day. Amen. I hope you enjoy the service. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Easter Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning the 36th verse. Whilst the disciples were talking, Jesus himself stood among them and he said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Luke 
at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Here ends our Gospel reading. Good morning. I wonder what you think of resurrection. When you hear that word, what does it look like? What does it mean? And what word or words of resurrection do you and I need to hear now? Today, we have Luke's account. Jesus is risen, he's alive, but not a ghost. This wasn't a strange and lifelike body. This body had life. This body was physical. They could touch it. Jesus invites them to. Don't be afraid of this. Believe, see, touch. This is me. Jesus' hands and feet would still bear the marks of crucifixion. He couldn't have hidden those, and Jesus clearly didn't want to. Those marks reveal who he was, the risen saviour, whose death changed everything to bring life, this new resurrection life. And just in case you're still not quite there, he eats fish. And I wonder if for Luke, the physician researcher, that that was the detail that got him, that made the difference, that allowed him to believe. So Jesus was risen and yes, in his human body. But there's enough detail to show that this wasn't simply a human body. Jesus could walk through walls, doors, suddenly appear. Jesus risen was still human, but also clearly divine. The barrier between invisible and visible, earthly and heavenly, human and divine was broken. But more importantly, it still is. Jesus tells his disciples to witness to this, tell others, help them believe, but also to realise this is now the new normal for you too. Live in the reality and power of the resurrection. Don't simply go back to understanding life as you did. Resurrection life needs to be our new normal. At funerals, it's a constant in the prayers, not because people don't know that or need to be reminded, but to be reassured. Our loved one, us, this is our future. This is what will happen to us. This is what is promised. We will live again in eternity with the Lord of life. But it's not just a hope for after death. Resurrection life starts now. Paul in Romans tells us that the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and in I. You're not the same as you once were. Christians are called that because we are little Christs. We can do what Christ did. And that for me is all about resurrection. When we pray, we can see answers to prayer. 
We can change the society and the world around us through living and working out our ethical Christian values. We can help at the food bank, become part of the discipleship team, the children's work team, the alpha team, the pastoral team, schools work. We can grow out as teams and look to the future of being part of our community, but growing our community. Lots of opportunities, but it simply can't be for the few. Watching the funeral of Prince Philip yesterday and hearing the accounts of his life, the things that he'd been involved in, led, supported, the way he'd used his gifts, his compassion, and of course his position to make that difference for others. Well, so can we. Christianity is not a faith where others do the work. It's where we all play a part, where we are all witnesses. You and I can see families change through love, commitment and kindness. The kingdom of God doesn't come through waving a magic wand. There's no sudden event where God's sovereign power does it all. It comes through us. Christ asks us to be his witnesses to the resurrection, to be the body of Christ and take on his mantle, to live resurrection life, show what it means, live it, show it, breathe it, love it. Because when we do, others see that, others believe, others choose Christianity. It's not about fundraising or faculties or the buildings, but each one of us having a living faith rooted in resurrection life. Over the next few weeks, as we approach Pentecost, we have the opportunity to witness our faith to others through thy kingdom come. Whether it's by praying for five people to come to a true living faith or to help others in expressing their faith through some activities that we're going to have in church and through some mission activities around the town. So I encourage you, be part of the witness. Live, breathe and show resurrection life to others. And may we fulfil our calling as Christ sent us to do. And may the peace of Christ be with you.
And now let us pray. As we are still in the season of Easter, we begin our prayer in this way. O Lord God Almighty, whose blessed Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, on the third day rose triumphant over death, raise us, we pray, from the death of sin unto the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things that are above, where he reigns with you in glory. And this we ask for the sake of the same, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And mindful of the death of the Duke of Edinburgh and the grief of the Queen and the other members of his family, so we pray for her and for all of them and for all others who at this time have suffered the loss of those dear to them. Comfort, O Lord, we pray, all who mourn the loss of those near and dear to them. Be with them in their sorrow. Give them faith to look beyond the troubles of this present time and to know that neither death nor life can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And if this is indeed, as has been said, the end of an era with the, the death of the Duke of Edinburgh, let us then look to the future and pray for our country as we go forward. Grant, O Lord, to us and to all the people of this land that true love of country which is in harmony with the mind of Christ. Take away from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us more charity and forbearance with one another. Grant to our leaders wisdom and singleness of purpose and to us all the spirit of willing service and cheerful sacrifice that we may fulfill your purposes and glorify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we go forward we pray for the gift of hope. O God of hope, Fill us, we beseech thee, with all joy and hope in believing, that we may ever abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit, and show forth in our thankfulness to you in trustful and courageous lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And by the Spirit of the just made perfect, Teach us, we pray, in our turn, O Lord, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labour and to seek for no reward save only the knowledge that we do your will. For only so shall we be worthy of those great souls who in every age have ventured all in obedience to your call of whom this world has never been worthy, but for whom all the trumpets have sounded on the other side, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we sum up our prayers in the words of the Lord's Prayer, using the traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
Thank you for attending this service. I don't know how many people will be doing so now that we have resumed live services, but I hope there will still be some of you out there who found them worthwhile. It has certainly been an interesting experience contributing to our online services, and I think there will be some pluses to take from the last year, as well as, sadly, many losses. So, may I wish you every blessing for the coming week, as we say our final prayer. May God be near us to defend us, within us to refresh us, around to preserve us, before us to guide us, behind us to protect us, above us to bless us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen.